Hey everybody, today um, I'll be going over the features that any Mac users can utilize with the QNAP NAS. This presentation will cover a quick step-by-step -step setup of the NAS and after that we'll be then going over how to remotely access files stored on the NAS from any web browsers. Then we'll be going over some backup features of the NAS. And last but not least, the home multimedia features that pretty much makes you need a NAS rather than a DAS. Why QNAP Turbo NAS? What is a DAS? Um, it's what most of you guys are familiar with, which is short for direct attached storage, such as your external hard drive via USB or Thunderbolt. It is usually cheaper and faster, but it also lacks the scalability along with the inability to organize files. You also need to manually app, uh, back up your files by literally dragging the updated files into the storage device from your computer, or even sometimes directly editing the files off the storage device, which is pretty risky if you have something happening to it or that's the only copy you've got when it does crash. NAS, which is short for Network Attached Storage, is a central storage system consisting of multi multiple hard drives, which is connected to the internet. The gigabit network also provides faster transfer speeds and unlike, a, uh, and unlike a DAS, gives you access across different platforms through the internet, such as your computer, smartphone, tablets, and without having to physically carry the files stored on the device. In short, it is your personal cloud device dedicated for you and only you. And let's now head on to the setup NAS, uh, setup part of the NAS. The CD list setup is fairly easy. These are the steps which I will go over now with some simple directions. One, screw the in and insert the hard drives. Two, connect NAS to the router with the Ethernet cable. Three, turn on the power. And four, go to start.qnap.com. So there are four steps in initialization uh, initial to initialize this NAS. So the first picture are um, the screws on the side, which you will then screw the hard drive onto the NAS tray. And once it's screwed up, it will look like this. Then you will just plug it into the NAS. Um, you will hear a big click when you do uh, securely lock it into the NAS. So right here, you will have to um, connect the NAS to the router with the Ethernet cable. And you'll see that um, connection right here with the black cord. And after that, you turn on the NAS and you open a browser and type in start.qnap.com. And here is the real life demo. Hi, everybody. We'll be going over quickly on how to set up the NAS with a Mac. Um, right now, make sure the NAS and your computer are both connected to the router and have internet connection. After you turn on the NAS, you will hear a long beep, which means that the NAS is ready and boot up and ready to go. Now let's set it up. Open a web browser and type in start.qnap.com. Right now I'm using a TS-251, which means it has two bays and I'll select my model and start now. And assuming that um, since it was covered in the previous session, I assume all the hardwares are already installed. So right now, we can just skip this. And go to cloud installation. And be sure to check the side of your NAS, they will have a little sticker that has a QR code and eight digits up on it. And you can start the cloud installation by clicking Start Cloud Installation and enter in the eight digits. And we'll get to this page, which is My QNAP Cloud. It's an account that you can set up later. Um, we'll go over it later. So basically, this is a service that allows you to remote access all your files, which is the NAS. 
um, anywhere. So let's create later and skip it. And it will get to this page right here. Start quick setup. Click on the start button and then it will give you a basic information about your NAS which you can change your name and your password and time zone etc. Let's click proceed. Um, this is confirming that all the data on the hard drive right now will be erased. So be sure to back that up if you are not using an empty one. And once these are all checked off, it will start initializing. It's that simple. The installation process may vary upon the configuration of your hard drive. So right here, you can click continue to start initializing the rest of the NAS. And we can connect and log in to QTS. And right here, you will see this is your IP address of your NAS. So you can log in with your credentials. The password is admin, which is the same. So right now I'm going to show you how to log in to your QTS. So I assume that all of you guys uh, will be downloading the QFinder app, which is right here. You can download it from our website. And once you download it, when you hit refresh, it will search for all the NASs on the network. And I have one right here and double click the IP address. And it will allow you to see this screen, QTS. And you can log in again with your credentials. And it's pretty simple. And you can see your NAS over here. And this is the menu. And you can see there's control panel, your photo station, music station, video station. Um, some useful ones are download station and file station. And there's the app center right here. Um, let's take a look at the file station, which I'll go over later in the presentation. It'll look like this, and you can see all the files in the folders, which I don't really have any here, and you can minimize it. Okay, so hopefully that live demo was very easy, and um, I'm now going to talk about how to access your files that are stored onto your TurboNAS. There are ways to access your files, which I'll go over one by one. Number one, standard protocols such as SIFS, AFP, FTP, and WebDAV. Two, file station, which is um, a station that you will see in your QTS um, homepage, um, which is um, accessing all your files through a web browser. Essentially, um, for number three is the mobile app, which is QFile. Which, you can be, uh, which can be downloaded from um, your Apple App Center and you can access your NAS wherever you are. Number four is the QSync feature, which is your private Dropbox. Um, right now I'm going to start by enabling all these protocols. So, okay, so right now to enable Samba SIFs, you will need to go to Control Panel under the QTS and under Network Services, Win, Mac, NFS, and then Enable File Servers for Microsoft Networking, and hit Apply. For AFP, it's in the same tab. You can go to the second tab, which is the Apple Networking, and, en and Enable AFP, and hit Apply. For WebDAV, you go under Applications instead, and under Web Server, and you will see it right here, enable WebDAV, and then hit apply all. For F FTP, you can go back to the network services and enable FTP service and hit apply all. 
So that was pretty simple. And to connect to these protocols through Finder in your Mac, you would have to um, go to your Mac under Go, connect to server, and enter the following commands, which is such as SMB over here slash slash IP and um, put in your IP address so you can connect to your NAS. Here's a and right demo, now, I'm going to show you here. how to access your NAS and your files via AFP. We can start by going to QFinder, which is an app that shows you all the IP addresses of the NASs on the network. Right now, I have only one, so let's double click it. And it will take me to the NASs. So right now, I'm already signed in, so it just skipped the login credentials. Go to Control Panel, Network Services and this first tab right here, and Apple Networking. And be sure to enable AFP, and then hit reply, Apply. And let's minimize this. So remember, this is your IP address, and we have to save it so we can enter it in later. Let's go to a new Finder, and click Go, connect to server, and type in we can then enter AFP and then your IP and click connect and your credentials and select anything to go into and you'll see this is my download folder of the NAS or you can just click on the side, you'll see the whole NAS in a file format. And now you can access your files and your NAS. When you log into your QTS, you will see the file station, which I've just talked about. And it is, it's the orange icon with the file folder. You can click on it and view all your files that are stored and backed up to your NAS. It works like your Finder and you can manage, view, and edit your files very easily. Share your files um, is also very easy. There will be a share button on the top of the file station which you can click and you will get to this page, um, the, this pop-up which will allow you to enter the receiver's email, um, subject line, and also a link. You can copy this link and then also enter it into any of your email and send it through, such as um, to your coworker, and they can just download the link, um, which lets you download lets them download the shared file that you wanted them to see. So after that, you also get the chance to um, set how long this link to be valid, and let's say this project of yours is for your client's view and it's very sensitive and you want this to expire in one week and not forever valid. So you can set this to seven days like in the screenshot and hit apply. So this link that is sent out will expire in seven days. Um, a person which receives this link when they hit the, um, the link they will get to this page which is the download link page. and um, Let's say you send it to your family or your coworker or friends. Um, they can download like very easily and they can select the pictures that they want to download or the files um, wherever they are. So, or either they can just hit download all. So all the files will just then go into their, um, their computer or smartphone or tablet. So the benefits of this file station is that it makes a set accessing your files from the QNAP much easier and the files um, since the files are getting larger due to the higher resolution sending files through email becomes very challenging so we then do stuff like putting stuff in Dropbox or Google Drive but um, putting into a NAS would be the most secured way and you have the most control out of it so here is the next thing that I'm going to talk about which is the QFile app which is um, downloadable from the Apple App Store and it's free. 
Um, you can access your files on your tablet or your smartphone as long as you're connected to the internet. And if your MyQNAP cloud service was enabled, which was mentioned before in the setup demo, um, it will allow you to access your files um, and your NAS with your dedicated address. For example, I've set up this NAS to be abc123.myqnapcloud.com. So this address, when you put it into any web browser, including um, the Q file, when they ask you for IP, and then you enter in your address, I mean your password for your NAS, it will then connect to your NAS. So um, basically, you can access your NAS wherever you are because of the MyQNAP cloud service. Um, so in, in this picture you can see the download um, folder, the imaging or multimedia. If I have a lot of movies I can just press that folder and it'll get to all the files in the NAS which you can access it wherever you are um, such as Starbucks, you know, when you're at work, you can listen to music, um, access any files at home so it was very convenient. Second, I'll be talking about the QSync app. QSync is basically your own personal Dropbox. And we have created this for all of our NAS users to utilize this NAS or the NAS that they have bought as their own Dropbox. So essentially, users don't have to pay monthly fees. And then, in contrast, they also get much more space, So, um, which is a great feature which I will be talking about it um, in another session. But you can download this app on, from our website and have it on your Mac. So you can sync your files in this dedicated folder called QSync folder. And when you put all these files in this folder, um, the NAS will um, let your devices, such as your, smart, uh, your work computer or your home computer, have the file, same file, um, synced at all times. Um, read about this cool feature on our website if um, this is not clear enough. So next we'll be going over how to backup your files to the NAS. There are benefits um, which is we have Time Machine which is um, equipped in all Macs and it works as a backup software. So if you do have um, experiences with it or you've probably backed up with it before you probably did it to um, onto an external hard drive and if you still remember about that backup the hard drive ended up being dedicated only for this time machine so you cannot store anything else on this hard drive um, backing up to the NAS with time machine is very easy and I'll go over step by step step later and um, it supports multiple users and multiple time machines and you can easily manage all these um, backups or these time machines um, in the QTS backup station. So in an example, if my Mac, were, uh, my Mac was breaking down and I would like to take it in to um, fix at the store, I would need to back up my, my uh, computer before they replace it or my files would get lost. So I will then back this to my NAS and restore when the new one comes back. And it's pretty useful because I've actually used it. Um, how to do this? Let's go number one. It's you enable Time Machine from the backup station. So when you open the QTS, you will go to backup station. You click it and on the left hand side there's going to be a backup server. And under that there's the Time Machine and um, you have to enable it by click checking off the box and um, it lets you set up the password and the volume hard drive you would like to use and the maximum capacity you would like to use to dedicate um, your hard drive for time machine so if you set zero it means that it's unlimited and after you enable it you go to your system preference on your Mac and find the time machine icon it's on the left hand side on the bottom and you click it and this will come up. Um, when you turn it on, it will let you select your NAS and in my QTS it was named TM Backup. So I click that and use disk and then it will start backing up in about 90 seconds. 
So when you leave this on, this whole thing will start happening. And that's all. It's very simple, which is also very useful for all Mac users. Another type of backup is from your NAS to another NAS. And let's say you already had a QDAP NAS and you just recently bought a new one and you would like to replicate uh, or move all these files to the newer NAS. You can set up real time um, or immediate or schedule backup to another NAS by um, hitting remote replication on the left hand side, the first tab, NAS to NAS. Um, you click on create a replication job and you can schedule it um, whether you want this replication job to happen um, immediately after you hit apply or you can just schedule a time that you would like to um, have this old NAS to back up to the new NAS. You know, uh, maybe once a week or every Fridays at 3 o'clock. And this job would happen um, every week. So that's pretty useful. And um, so simply you go to this, again, the backup station, which is um, pretty common. And you go to the NAS to NAS, and you, when you click that create remote replication job it will go to this pop-up and you would then set up by putting in your IP address and um, we we'll have to ask for you to um, whether you want it to back up frequent uh, like immediately or you know the time backup so that was easy and um, next we'll be talking about the cloud services which um, is another feature that if you have already purchased some cloud services for backing up important files such as Amazon S3, Microsoft Azure, um, Google Drive or Dropbox, you can back up your NAS to these um, cloud services in case you know just for precautions you know and for more information or tutorial how to do that you can also find that on our website. Next, but not least, last but not least, I'll be talking about the multimedia features of the NAS. AirPlay. Um, AirPlay is a feature that allows multimedia or screens of your Apple devices to appear on a TV that is connected to an Apple TV. And from the Q file app, which we have covered, you can open your file and select it to be pushed onto Apple TV you have to make sure that your mobile devices are on the same network as your Apple TV and your NAS. So it's very convenient if you have Apple TV at home. You can um, stream, directly push. You don't need a computer. You can just push your um, media from your phone, the Q file app, onto the, uh, onto the TV. And um, next is the Q AirPlay, which is another feature that we have created um, for uh, you to push the media from the from your web browser um, to the to the um, TV and um, allows it's instead of the Q file app you have to download this app from the QTS app center and after you do that you could just push contents from any web browser to the TV next we'll be talking about the iTunes server once you back up your music, which I'm sure everybody has, to the NAS, you can set up this um, feature that you can find your NAS in your iTunes. And you can listen all the music on your NAS through your iTunes on your Mac. And um, another way to access your music is to download the Q Music app on our Apple um, App Store for free that you can just stream your music wherever you are. Either you're at work, or Starbucks, studying, at school, you can listen to, mu listen to the music that's stored on the NAS rather than you know, saving all this music onto our smartphone, which takes a lot of space and battery. And next is the Plex server. Um, hopefully everybody knows what Plex is and it's a great feature um, and application that me personally love. Um, and use all the time. 
Um, Plex Media Server is used to host the content and plugins that are, that are then streamed to Plex Media Center and Plex Mobile App Clients. So in short, you can store all your media on the NAS, such as, such, such as your movies, your TV shows, your music, um, your personal videos. And Plex is pretty cool in terms of um, organizing all these media and put in a very nice, um, you know, nice organized design. You can see over here in the picture, you will see that um, if you do have a movie such as, um, you know, if you have another movie at home and there's no cover media, Plex would then, you know, search all their database and put it on there so it's easier for you to view. So um, this is also in our QNAP app store and you can access your media on your Plex TV. Um, there are many more features that I haven't covered such as the photo station, music station, HD station, and hundreds of, uh, hundreds of available apps in the App Center and there's mobile apps such as QFile, QManager, QMusic, QPhoto, and so on. Um, be sure to visit our website to find out more about these cool features. Um, I'll also be doing more webinars down the road, so tune in for that. And thank you again um, for listening. Um, feel free to contact us again at usasales.qnap.com. We'll be following up with the webinar specials and current popular models, which we think um, you guys will like with a promotional price. If you would like to read and learn more about our products, please visit go.qnap.com slash get started, which will be a simple guide and overview of our current product lines and features. Um, thank you again and hope you can join us for our web webinar, which will be on the 13th of January in 2015.